Hi there and welcome to the second part of this build video. Here we're going to install Unraid onto a flash drive, then configure our BIOS, and booting up into Unraid we're then going to set up our plugins, pre-clear some drives and set up the array. And then finally we'll configure some shares. So let's get started. OK, Unraid installs onto a USB stick, and I really like the SanDisk UltraFit drives. They're really small and slim and don't stick out much from the case. First we'll go through how to create the flash drive on Windows, and then we'll go through how to create it on OS X. OK, so head across to the Lime Technology website and click on Download. And then for Windows we can actually download a USB creator, and this is by far the easiest way on Windows to create it. So just download that, OK, so here it is on my desktop, and make sure you've got the USB drive plugged into the computer, and then just double click on this and run the file. Then here you get the option to run either the next or the stable version. Um, for most people it's probably best to run the stable version, but if you wanted to run a beta or RC, you'd choose next. And here you can see there's the flash drive, so all you need to do is click right and it will erase and write Unraid onto your USB stick. This part's obviously highly sped up, but it will take you probably roughly around a minute and a half to two minutes to prepare the USB stick. And when it's done, just click on close and then you can eject the USB stick and you can use it in Unraid. And there we can see there that it's labelled Unraid and there's all of the files that we need. OK, so now let's create the USB stick using an Apple Mac. Um, we can't use a um, USB creator as yet, so what we're going to have to do is download the latest stable version of Unraid. Um, and that's the one at the top here. OK, once we've downloaded it, just put it on the desktop and unzip it. And then we can delete the original file. Now open Disk Utility and then plug in your USB flash drive. And now we need to format the USB flash drive. Um, we need to call it Unraid in capital letters. And for format we need to choose MS-DOS FAT and just make sure it's on master boot record and just click Arrays. OK, so when it's done you'll see that it's called Unraid and just open it and show it in Finder and then we can close Disk Utility and now what we need to do is we need to copy all of the files to what we unzipped here and just place them inside of our USB flash drive. And once you've put them in the USB flash drive if you see here there's three files and this one here it says Make Bootable on Mac so we want to open that file then we're just going to need to pop in our password here so we just need to give it a minute or two and it will turn that Unraid flash drive into a bootable drive and so once done we can just eject this drive and it's ready to use. OK so once we've created our USB flash drive let's put it in the server and then start the server but we're going to actually stop and go into the BIOS because there's a few things there that we need to change before running Unraid. We want to make sure that everything in the BIOS is correct in order to support all the things we need. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to update the motherboard BIOS. Now we're going to do this first because if we were to do it last, normally updating a motherboard's BIOS will reset everything to factory defaults. On this motherboard we have to go up to Tool. Um, on your motherboard it might be totally different but there will always be somewhere where you can update your BIOS. And on this motherboard you can actually update the BIOS straight from this screen here just by clicking on Internet Flash. It will then download the latest firmware so long as you've got a USB stick plugged into the computer and then it will update the BIOS. So once the BIOS is up to date we can then go setting up the various things in the BIOS for Unraid to work correctly. So now we're going to enable the things in the BIOS to enable virtualization if we want to be able to use virtual machines in our Unraid server. For that we're going to need to enable VTX and VTD. So for me I'm going to click on to advanced and then go to CPU configuration and here you can see it says that the Intel virtualization technology is disabled. Well we need to enable that and once we've done that we need to go back to advanced and this time we want to click on chipset configuration. Okay it says here that VTD is disabled. We must enable that if we don't then we're not going to be able to pass through a graphics card or any other PCIe devices. And another important thing just to check is Unraid actually needs direct control of any hard disks attached. So we want to make sure our SATA mode is AHCI. 
Then finally we need to set the correct boot order. You can see here it's my NVMe drive that is bootable at present. So need to change it for the USB SAN disk. It can also boot from UFI SAN disk but don't use that, use the legacy boot. Although Unraid does support booting from UEFI but you have to actually set that after you've booted from legacy after you run Unraid for the first time. Okay so our motherboard BIOS is now fine so we can save changes and exit and boot up into Unraid. Okay so this is the bootloader and by default it will just boot into the normal Unraid OS that doesn't have a GUI but you can choose to boot in a GUI mode which will boot up a Firefox instance and then you can access the web UI but most of us will always boot in the Unraid OS and then access the server from another computer. So this is what you'll see if you didn't choose the GUI mode and you'll see at the bottom here that it lists the IP address that you've been assigned so with this IP address you can then go to a regular browser on a computer and log into the Unraid GUI. And when you first boot Unraid you'll come to the registration page and you're going to be unregistered so to get a trial key you're just going to have to pop your email address in and then click on to register trial and that will send you a trial registration key through to your email which you can put in and then have 30 days to try out Unraid and see if you like it, which of course you will. So just paste the key in there and then click install and then you're ready to go. So if you installed the standard version and you want to upgrade to the RC version then you can do that. Um, all you need to do is go to the Unraid forums and then scroll down and click on pre-release 6.4 support. So now if you look in this section you'll see a thread saying how do I install pre-releases and just copy this URL here and then go to the plugin section and click install plugin and then just paste it into here and click install and that will pull down the latest RC version and install it. We're going to have to reboot the server and then it will reboot back up and then you'll be in the latest RC and if we click on tools here there's a button that wasn't here before that's now called update OS and you can do that from here so if we click onto it you can actually choose from basically be on, on the stable version or on the next RC version so you can easily go back to the stable if you want and if you click check for updates at the top there it will tell you if there's a new version of Unraid available okay we're still not ready to set up our array yet First we want to install a bunch of plugins because one of the things we're going to have to do is to pre-clear our drives before using them. So for that we want to scroll down and we want to go down to where it says plugin support. Click on that and first we're going to install Squid's excellent community applications. It's an absolutely essential plugin. So click onto there and scroll down and you'll see this URL here. We just need to copy. So we just need to copy this URL and go to install plugin and paste it in and click install. Then click done and out at the top you'll see there's an extra tab that says apps. So from here we can install everything else that we need. So first we're going to type in pre-clear because we need to pre-clear our drives. And just click on to the little sort of hard drive icon here and that will install the pre-clear plugin. Okay, once it says plugin installed, we can close this window. Let's have a quick look at the plugin. And so obviously to pre-clear each disk, we just click on the icon here. And I pre-cleared my disk both at the same time. It does take rather a long time to do, as you can see here. When it finished, it had taken a total of 29 hours, but it's really worth it because basically it stress tests your disks and checks that there's not going to be any failures. Well, hopefully that's the plan anyway. And for more details on how and why to pre-clear your disks, please see my other video on pre-clearing disks. Right, even though I've pre-cleared the disks now, I'm not going to actually set up the array yet. I'm just going to install a few more plugins and then we'll do that afterwards. So next we'll install the excellent unassigned devices and this will allow us to actually plug in USB sticks, other external hard drives or other drives outside the array and be able to mount them in Unraid. So a very useful plugin. And you can see here now the two hard drives I just pre-cleared are showing here. So now they're unassigned devices because nothing's been assigned to the array as yet. But unassigned devices tells me that they're both pre-cleared. 
Right, so next I'm going to install a load of Dynamix plugins, some very useful plugins here. Um, firstly, I'm going to install the Cache Directories plugin. This makes basically searching your directories faster and stops having the drives having to be spun up every time. And next I'm going to install the S3 Sleep plugin that gives our server sleep capability. And another useful plugin is the Dynamix SCSI devices. Um, this is often very useful with NVMe drives just so they get the correct name. And as we've got an SSD drive, we're going to put in the Dynamix SSD trim plugin. And lastly, we'll put in the Dynamix system temp so we can read the CPU temperature, etc. And now for the Dynamix system temperature to work, we have to have Perl installed on the server. And the easiest way to do that is to install Nerd Tools. So that's what I'm going to install now. Okay, so let's use that to install Perl. So let's click onto plugins and then go down to where it says Nerd Tools. So now there's actually two things I'm going to install here. As well as Perl, I'm actually going to install Netcat OpenBSD here um, because I'm going to use this later on for something to do with VMs. So I'm going to switch Perl on as well here. And then at the bottom of the page, we just have to click Apply to install those two things. OK, so now those two things are installed. So now we're going to configure the dynamic system temperature. So we just need to go down to here and click onto Detect, then Save and then load drivers and then once we've done this we can just select the CPU temperature, the motherboard temperature and everything we need. Right next let's have a look at our settings and first we'll take a look at our disk settings and here we can set our default file system. Now I recommend using XFS and an exciting new feature of these new encrypted file types which have been added in into the latest RC. I'll be doing a video on that soon, so stay tuned for that. But for now, we're going to stick to XFS. Um, here we can enable the array to start automatically, which I'm going to set to yes. So let's just apply those settings. Right, so next let's look at our network settings. You can set your network cards to be either bonded or not here. I'm going to have my not bonded because I want to be able to pass through one of them to a VM later. So let's click on to apply. And here obviously we can set our IP address, at the moment it's set for an automatic IP. Um, you can set it for static, but what I like to do is just copy the MAC address here and then I go to my router and I set my router so it assigns the same IP address each time for each MAC address. I prefer that to setting a static IP because if I move the server to another location where the network range is different, I don't have to worry about the static IP being out of the range. It will just be given a new IP by DHCP. Okay, so next thing, let's look at our display settings. I prefer to have a dark theme myself and I like to change the banner. Okay, so that's all our settings done, our plugins are installed and our disks are pre-cleared. So now it's going to be time to set up the array. Right, so I've got two um, 4 terabyte drives and um, an NVMe cache. So I'm going to set the parity first with one of the 4 terabytes. And the second one obviously is going to be the data drive. And then if we scroll down we're going to set the cache drive. So for that I'll just use the NVMe drive. So that's the disk assigned, so now I can start up the array. Now because everything's assigned, there's no unassigned devices here now. So when we start the array, it will automatically start doing a parity build. I don't want it to do it, so I'm going to cancel it. Um, I want to set everything up on the server first, and then do the parity sync afterwards. And there's some drives here that aren't formatted, so we just tick the box here, and then click onto format, and it will prepare the drives. And you can see here it says formatting. It will take a few minutes to format the drives, but once done we can start using the array and then set up our shares. Okay, so our array is ready to use now. So let's click onto shares. These are the default shares that Unraid makes itself as an app data, domains for VMs, ISOs for our ISO images, and a system share. In the system share, that's where it stores our Docker image, and by default that's 20 gigs. And also in the system share, there's the libvert image, which is used for our VMs. Right, let's look inside the settings of these shares. Let's look at the app data. You can see here that it's um, set to use the cache disk, and it's set to prefer. So what this will do is it will always prefer to put the data on the cache disk whenever possible. But should it, say, get too full up, 
It will then carry on putting the extra data onto the array, but then if any additional space becomes available on the cache, when Mover runs, it will move these files back onto the cache drive from the array. OK, and domains, this is set up the same way, so our VMs will always stay on the cache drive wherever possible. Um, the ISOs, it's set to use the cache drive, but it's set for yes, so this means when new data is written, it will be written to the cache drive for this share, and then it will be moved across over onto the array. I'm going to actually change this and set this to no, because I'm not really bothered about that at all. I just want them stored directly on the array and never to be on the cache drive at all. And lastly, the system, that's also set for prefer as well. Okay, so now it's time to add our own shares, and we just click this button here. So first I'm going to add a download share, and I'm going to enable the cache drive on this, because I want my downloads to first go to the cache and then be moved to the array. So let's click add share. And the share is just going to be set as a public share here, I'm not going to change that. And next I'm going to add a media share. Um, this time I don't want it to use the cache disk because I don't want it to go onto the cache at all. Um, next let's add a data share where I just have to put various data etc. Um, again I'm not going to use the cache disk. So now that's all the shares set up and the server's now ready. Next we can set up all of our docker containers and VMs etc. But that's all coming in the next part. Well if you like this part then please hit up that like button and if you're new to the channel then please subscribe. Anyway thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next video.